my dudes, and welcome back to Previously Gifted. I just got really self-conscious during the intro dance because I feel like I do the same little thing every time. It's like a hand drumming kind of deal going on, and so I was trying to change it up, and I don't think it worked out well, but it's okay. We're back. Welcome to episode 32 of Previously Gifted. Your girl is working hard to try to be consistent these days. We'll see how long it'll last because we're about to come up on the holidays and lots of trips and you never know what's gonna happen, do you? Um, so today I'm going to be discussing a uh, fear that I faced this week, uh, a couple of shows I've been watching, um, more gym stories, yes I've been keeping up with my fitness, okay? And then uh, some movie reviews. And then I want to talk about Black Friday because I went to the mall yesterday and it was overwhelming. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about all of that in today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe if you're listening on iTunes and make sure you leave me a rating if you're a big old fan. I think we're at 95 reviews right now and I would love to get to 100 just for uh, for the sake of it, <laughs> for no reason at all, for my own self-gratification. That's why I need it. Um, a couple of you guys have left some new reviews, so I'm going to be reading those in a minute. But first, I have to give a shout out to our sponsors. In case you somehow don't know, we have a Patreon where you can support the podcast with a monthly donation. It's patreon.com slash previously gifted. So if you're interested in checking that out, slide on over there. Um, so our sponsors are Eric Courtright, Hannah Baker, Liz Walsh, Lauren Thomas, and love you. Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast as always. I love every single one of you who's listening. So holy shit. This week I faced a fear. This doesn't happen often. I, I'm pretty sure I told you guys about when I went to Six Flags. Maybe I didn't. Um, a couple months ago, Nathan and I went to Six Flags. I think it was for his birthday. And I realized that I was like scared of roller coasters for the first time in a long time. So I think as I've grown up, I've gotten um, more afraid of things. <laughs> and um, it's not, sorry, I'm messing with my volume. It's not fun as you grow up to um, let your mortality sink in and let your fears get the best of you, um, but it, it's happening, you know? So yeah, Six Flags was a little bit scary to me. By the way, relevant to roller coasters, I have a confession. This week I've been kind of um, staying off of social media unofficially, so I deleted Twitter, Facebook. Um, I still have Instagram in case I need to post on Instagram, but... I haven't opened it in a few days, which is big for me, okay? Because I am a chronic scroller. But, um, so I'm doing this unofficial social media cleanse. I'm being all kinds of healthy, you guys. Working out, trying not to ruin my life with social media. It's going well. Um, but yeah, and I've realized that I have, I always have to have a replacement, which is horrible. Um, so I don't really have a reason to touch my phone, except that I have been playing games. And one of the games that I've been playing is Roller Coaster Tycoon, um, which I hadn't played since I don't know even what console it was on, but like you build your own amusement park and it's pretty fun. So for some reason the other day I was like, I want to download some new games. So I found Roller Coaster Tycoon and I've been playing it. And th the thing about phone games is like, so many of them are not satisfying in any way. And it like pisses me off to spend so much time, like, building my amusement park, collecting coins, because what's the point, you know? Like, no matter how much I level up, no matter how many coins I get, whether I finally get to buy the new thrilling roller coaster or attraction, um, you never get actual satisfaction out of it, which is obvious because it's a, it's an iPhone game. Um, but still, I find myself playing it for hours and hours. So I got kind of sick of Roller Coaster Tycoon, <laughs> and then I downloaded a game that I actually saw on Roller Coaster Tycoon's, um, ads, I think. It's called Homescapes, and you literally... It's this butler dude who goes back to his childhood home, and it's this big old mansion, and he's, like, fixing it up for his parents, but you need stars to fix things up, and you have to play these, like, puzzle games to win the stars. To be fair, it's actually a fairly challenging game, 
Um, Because I hate games where you get stuck and, like, you can't advance without having, having to pay for things, like, with real money. So this game's not exactly like that, um, but it is challenging enough to where you run out of lives and then you have to wait, like, a real amount of time to play again. <laughs> so anyway, I've been playing Homescapes, and, um, like, yesterday after dinner, I was like, okay, Nathan, I'm gonna go edit a video. I gotta get work done. I have a lot to do. And then I ended up playing fucking Homescapes for a whole hour, and he heard me. He came upstairs. He's like you said you were editing. I was like, yeah, I meant to. And then, and then I had unlimited lives for 15 minutes and I had to just keep playing. I couldn't, you know, lose that. So <laughs> anyway, my, my phone cleanse is not going well, but my social media cleanse is going, you know, pretty well. So anyway, that is totally irrelevant to my story. Um, aside from that, roller coasters, fears, I went to a place in Exeter, for those of you familiar with Devon, um, we went to a place called Go Ape, which is, uh, oh my God, what would you call it? It's like a, a treetop adventure. <laughs> That's so vague. Um, so we were trying to figure out what to do with um, Nathan's siblings, his brother and his sister, for the weekend, because we really hadn't had time to like hang out, all of us, because um, everybody's busy with school and work and stuff. So at first we were going to... Um, we were going to go to Stonehenge, which is a couple hours away, and uh, they were like, you know what, Stonehenge is a little bit boring. It's like, it's not really worth going all the way out there just to see it and then drive all the way back. So maybe I'll go to Stonehenge someday, but um, I'm not going to go out of my way to go over there. But um, so we came up upon Go Ape, and I guess uh, Nathan and Kara had been there before. But basically, you get all strapped into these like harnesses. And you've got your own little uh, safety... I'm forgetting everything. Good. It's been just long enough to where I can't remember what anything is called. Um, you've got these safety harnesses and little... Um, fucking hell, I can't remember the word. You you put these little clips. Let's call them clips. You clip them on and then you can like zip line or you go over these like really high ropes courses or whatever. So, um, <laughs> Nathan showed me the promo video and I was like, fuck that. I was like, this is actually going to be terrifying. Like, no joke. I'm going to be shitting my pants, sweating, you know. Um, when I get nervous, my hands get very sweaty. I get hot. Um, and I get nervous pretty easily these days. So I was, I was, you know, ac actually a little bit scared of this. So, we go there and you have like a little bit of safety training and they teach you exactly how to um, do everything so that you don't die. Um, <laughs> so you've got like two safety clips, basically. They're, they're those like, I can't remember the word. It's going to piss me off when I'm editing this and I remember. Um, you're always supposed to be connected like to at least one line. So when you're moving, you'll clip one to the next one, but keep the next one connected. So no matter what, even if you were to slip and fall, like, you'd be connected to something and you'd be fine. So you're like, you climb up these big ass trees. Um, the ladders are the worst part. I hated those. You're connected all the time, but the ladders are kind of hard to climb up because you have to like pull yourself and the rope that's connected to you. I don't know. So you get up there and then you're on these little platforms that are pretty small and um, you can hang on to the tree that you're connected to and your clips are, you know, your harnesses are all connected, but it's still like very scary because uh, it was a slightly windy day and some of the trees are really skinny. So the, <laughs> the trees would be like swaying a little bit and we were looking at this one tree that was like bending and I was like, um, excuse me, <laughs> like, um... As people come across from tree to tree, platform to platform, um, like if you're doing something like a zip line, obviously that weight and momentum will like pull the tree and the platform that you're on. So, oh God, it made me so nervous. And that was our very first little course. So for this whole thing at Go Ape, um, we had maybe like four or five treetop courses. So you've got all these different obstacles and like um, you'd either be like, balancing on a tightrope, but not really because you've got things that you can put your arms on and you're connected to the safety harness. Um, but like, it doesn't matter because it's like the weirdest feeling. Um, 
many of you may have done zip lines or like this sort of thing that I'm talking about. This was my first time doing it. I had never done a zip line before. Um, so all of this was new and I had to trust the system. Um, but even when you do have a harness on, it's so easy for your mind to trick you and make you nervous anyway. Even like you do the clips, you triple check that they're all like fully clipped in and you're totally fine and you feel it and you know that it can hold you but you're still shitting yourself. So <laughs> it's it's a wild, wild feeling. My legs got really shaky just because like as you're crossing all of these obstacles and stuff, you never really get to like fully relax. I think the most relaxing part is at the end of each course, you get to do the zip line. And the zip line's like, it's funny because you're putting yourself out there the most, I guess, but you feel the most secure because you're just chilling. Like you can let go and you're totally fine. But um I hated the ones where it's like, it'd be like a, a bridge across, but you have to like take a big wide step and like all the steps are all wiggling on their own and it just feels so fucking unstable. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, that was really fun. We did that and uh, it was pretty challenging. That was our little workout of the day. But yeah, there were definitely some points like halfway through where I was like, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> I was like, I'm having a good time, but I hate it. And I never want to do it again. Um, I think I would do it again. But it's definitely something that takes a lot of mental and physical energy. But anyway, ticked that off the list, bitch. Yeah, your girl's done a zip line. Did I fall on my ass each time in the landing? Yes. <laughs> I was so mad because I kept watching um, Nathan's sister, Kara. She would land perfectly every time. Because while you're on a zip line, you, like, twist around and you can't really, like, move yourself back very easily. So I would go and then I'd turn around and then I'd come into the landing, which is, like, this little hill, like, covered in wood chips, basically. And I would just, like, skid right onto, like, my whole ass <laughs> and my back. So I was just covered in, like, muddy, dirty wood chips, you know, my whole back and legs. But, you know, that's part of the fun, okay? I can't wait for a time in the future when I've had enough zipline practice and I can show everybody that I can land on a zipline in a, an attractive way. I don't know. But anyway, yes, I faced a fear. I faced a real fear. I think it's, it's very important, especially as an adult, when, you know, it had been years, like, since I had even gone to, like, an amusement park. So that's why I was scared of roller coasters. Or I read too many news stories, which is true as well. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm getting more and more afraid of flying, which is so annoying because I fly so often. Um, I just, I don't know what it is. I feel like I just keep freaking myself out more. And I wish it was the opposite. I wish I was feeling more comfortable. But anyway, I think it's really important to um, put yourself out there in some kind of way and, you know, do things that scare you a little bit. Of course, I felt safe doing this because I knew that, you know, there aren't actual instructors like up there at every platform with you, but they're watching like from below and they teach you how to do everything and you're supposed to like keep an eye on each other, everyone who's in your group, to make sure that you're doing it correctly. But um, yeah, I think I think it's really important because... You can easily have fears that let you, like, stop yourself from doing these things. And I feel like the longer and longer it goes that you let the fear win, um, the worse it's going to be. And it, it just becomes more difficult to overcome that later on. I feel like this was partially um, <laughs> inspired by the fact that we were watching, we were watching some home videos of um, Nathan's family. But we were also watching our, like, skydiving and bungee jumping videos. Um, his brother and sister, Brendan and Kara, were together in Australia while Kara was traveling the world last year. And, um, yeah, in Australia, they did quite a few bungee jumps and different, like, you know, thrill activities. So, you know, they paid to get the DVDs or whatever to film it. And so we were watching all the different ones. And then we pulled up my skydiving video, which is on YouTube. And um, it's just so surreal. It's so weird to, to see it because each of those experiences is so quick that, like, you're not really thinking while it's happening. You're just, like, overwhelmed. Or you're moving so quickly you can't really, like, think about it anyway. Um, but then it's it's weird to watch the videos back and be like, holy shit, like, that was me. I actually, like, jumped off this thing or jumped out of a plane, you know? 
Um, it's pretty wild. I, I would be, after, like, so terrified to bungee jump, though. Like, that's, like, for some reason, skydiving is less scary to me. Or it was. I, I like, if I, if you were like, hey, do you want to skydive tomorrow? I'd be like, fuck no. <laughs> Even though I had a good time last time. And by the, by the time that you're up there and about to go, you're just like, all right, I'm ready. I'm full of adrenaline. Let's go. Um, but it terrifies me to think about it right now. Uh, but I think bungee jumping, I don't know what it is. You have to, like, actually push yourself. Like, when you're skydiving and you're tandem, you're attached to the professional and you're like, well, fuck it. I could literally pass out. <laughs> I watched a video of a guy who passed out during his skydive, which is pretty funny. He was fine. It was during, like, the the uh, parachuted part, so they were just chilling. But, um, yeah, I'm like, well, you could just pass out and, like, they'll take care of it as long as your frickin' parachute's open, so knock on wood. Uh, but bungee jumping, you have to literally step out or jump or dive, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. My legs would be shaking so hard. And then you you have the whole, like, whiplash of it. Like, <laughs> we watched a video of Brendan, um bungee jumping and he he jumped straight down like a pencil so <laughs> instead of diving he jumped down like a pencil and then his body had to like whip upside down which must have been so painful <laughs> but I feel like I would do the same thing in that in that moment and just be like ah and just go and fucking forget exactly how to do it Whew. oh it got me so riled up it's a scary scary thing if any of you have sky dived i always want to say like sky doved that's totally not grammatically correct um or bungee jumped or done any other extreme activity let me know i i love hearing people's stories even though it, it makes me nervous to hear them um so on that note we started watching a show which some of you may be familiar with it's called i'm a celebrity get me out of here um, it's on every night, <laughs> so I think it started, like, three nights ago. It's our little, uh, nightly routine, the whole family, and I and the dogs, we all come in and we watch it. And, um, basically the premise is a couple of celebrities, like ten, um, are in Australia, in the wilderness, just surviving, and they've got some challenges. I didn't really know what to expect, because I had never seen it, but, um... It's basically like a combination of Fear Factor and Big Brother. So, like, part of the show is about, like, their interactions with each other and kind of the social aspect. Um, but then the challenges that they do are either kind of physical or fear-based challenges or lots of, lots of bugs and creepy crawlies. <laughs> Dude, like, oh, there are so many, like, snake challenges and, like, bugs being dumped on you. Ooh. I, I I don't know what I would be like in a situation like that. So, like, I give such props to these people who volunteer to do these shows because, like, oh, God. I mean, I guess nobody really knows how they would be in that situation until you just are and you just, <laughs> you have to, you know, fight or flight response kicks in. Um, so, you know, I think about it and I'm like, well, fuck, I guess I'll never know until, I don't know, maybe I get trapped in a snake pit or... I have a whole bucket of worms dumped on my head. I hope not. I really hope not. I don't really need that kind of an experience in my life. But, you know, for those of you who are into it, <laughs> go ahead. I will watch. So I'm a Celebrity started, and um, I hope this isn't a spoiler, but it was like three days ago. So any of you watching probably already saw it. The beginning episode, they have to, like, all show up in Australia and meet up and pick teams and stuff. So they grow up, they, they show up in different groups and then some of them had challenges and whatever. So uh, <laughs> the first group shows up and they had a challenge. I don't even remember what it was. And then the second group shows up and it's just two people. One of them is Emily Attack. Attack? She was from The Inbetweeners, if any of you have seen that. It's a fucking hilarious show. That's definitely my favorite um, British show, The Inbetweeners. It's so so, uh, these two show up and they're like, hey, um, the teams are fighting it out right now to see, you know, who gets to win. <laughs> who gets to win? 
and uh, you guys are just going to meet them by skydiving. And they were both like, what the fuck? We're just going to skydive right now? Like, we just got here. So they both go up in the tiny little plane, and they were, they were like, properly shitting themselves. Like, they were actually terrified. And um, so they do it. They do the skydive, and I was nervous for them. But they land, and they're like, holy shit, that was amazing. That was horrible. <laughs> you know, the typical skydive kind of reactions. Um, so that, that freaked me out. Oh yeah, the first thing that reminded me of Go Ape, <laughs> now that I'm uh, an official thrill seeker, was, uh, the very first challenge that they did to decide, like, who got to go to the good camp and the bad camp or whatever. No, that was later on. Whatever. Just who, who got to pick the, their team next. Um, the first challenge that they did was, like, this tilted obstacle thing where they had to like climb up at an angle while they're attached to these harnesses and they're like over the edge of a fucking cliff um way high up and they have to like reach out and and unclip these flags and put them in their little belt so that's the challenge it very much did remind me of fear factor actually um i fucking miss fear factor dude that show is intense as hell dude oh my god joe rogan Joe Rogan, when we only knew him as the guy who was yelling on Fear Factor, not the guy who's yelling on his podcast or yelling on, um, what's the fight? UFC things? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I hear so much about Joe Rogan these days and I don't know how I feel about it. I actually saw his stand-up live, um, at the, the comedy store, maybe? And I was like, huh, Joe Rogan, all right. He made vegan jokes, and I was like, all right, nice. Yeah, you're so edgy, dude. Ugh, that pisses me off. Every single comedy special, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but, like, every comedy special of 2018 has mentioned a vegan joke. And I'm like, dude, it's not funny. And I'm not just saying that because I'm vegan and I'm offended. But I'm totally just saying that because I'm vegan and I'm offended. Um, I just feel like they're, like, weak jokes. Like, ugh, you're gonna make fun of vegans? Like, I can understand making fun of vegans in 2017, but in 2018, in late 2018, you're going to be out here making fun of vegans? I get it. There are still a lot of vegans who are very annoying people or whatever, the the more righteous than thou type. But, like, most vegans are just chill and they just, you know, they just want to do something good. So, whatever. This is not about veganism. Um, yeah, so I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. That's the whole, um, that's the whole point of the show is, like, if during a challenge or whatever they can't handle it, they have to yell, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And it's like, haha, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the best thing is, I think, for me as an outsider, um, is that I don't know any of these celebrities, so it doesn't really seem, um, significant to me. Like, I can't imagine... Well, I don't know. They're, I, they're not, like, top, top celebrities. Like, some of them are lesser known or whatever. Um, but I think it would be more interesting for me if I were watching and actually knew who more of the celebrities were. But I'm getting to know them, you know? I'm getting to know them in a very vulnerable situation. I'm so proud of them. I don't even know them, and I'm so proud. <laughs> All right, it's been a little bit of s some time. That's how you say that. I'm going to take a break and then we will come back and talk about more tings. See ya. And we're back. I'm going to start off by giving a couple shout outs to those of you who left reviews. I am asking for reviews because I think that it helps the podcast some way. In the future, if I want to get some ads on here somehow, you got to convince people that you're a good podcast. <laughs> okay? So I want to give a shout out to uh, Mercy PDL. She said, lovely, five stars. This podcast feels like catching up with an old friend. Thanks. I love the laid back style and hearing what Tiffany has been up to lately. She's naturally funny, charming, and very relatable. I feel like I wrote this. I didn't, but thank you. I find this podcast to be a delight to listen to no matter what the topic is. Keep up the good work. Also, I find it rude that anyone would take the time to review a podcast to anything other than five stars. So this is mainly to counteract all those reviews. Thank you. Um, I, I agree and I disagree. Obviously, I don't like getting, you know, 
anything other than a four or five star review, but that's just my ego. I do like that you guys are willing to be honest with me, but please don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> please don't leave me any more mean, mean, uh, reviews, please. Leave me nice ones. Um, next one is from C. Kahalas. C. K. Alahas. Nope, that's not it. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, five stars. I get so happy when this downloads. I've been a longtime viewer of Tiffany's videos and have subscribed to the podcast since it started. An OG! Thank you! I love listening to it during my commute to school and appreciate Tiffany's realistic, relatable opinions and experiences. Overall, a great podcast to listen to if you like pop culture traveling, hearing funny stories, follow American politics, or are a young adult. Keep doing what you're doing, Tiffany. I, I realize how self-indulgent it is <laughs> right now for me to be reading these. Um, but I just want to appreciate you guys. You know, I like giving a shout out to people who are kind and obviously all of the people who support me and the pod. I appreciate it. So I want to give you your two seconds <laughs> and read your review. Okay, for the rest of you. Maybe this is stirring, you know, a little bit of inspiration for you to leave me a review. <laughs> Hee -hee, self-indulgent. We love it. And the last review of the day is from Robin. Funny and chill. Five stars. A funny and chill pod. Good for listening to in the background of driving or doing work. Very relatable, which is the point. Hell yeah. I enjoy the political discussions and film TV reviews. Wish each, wish each episode wasn't so scatterbrained. But I kind of enjoy the loosey-goosey structure. All the best to you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, all of you. And again, if you want to leave me a review, you can go to iTunes. It's a little bit complicated to get to on the mobile app, but you'll find it eventually. Leave me a rating and say something nice, please. Thanks. Um, I do agree. My, my episodes are definitely a bit scatterbrained occasionally. <laughs> um, but... That's just, it. that's how it is. It's like I'm having a little convo with you. This is like, I'm calling you, we're catching up, we haven't spoken all week, and I have so many random things to tell you. Um, burping, it wouldn't be a podcast without a couple of little low-key burps. Um, so, I want to talk about the gym. This is just a little story that made me laugh this week. So um, I've been going to the gym very often. The only day I didn't go was today because I had shit to do. Um, it's crunch time. I have to upload this stuff before we go to Dublin. We're going to Dublin tomorrow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to be good and get these things out on time. Uh, but okay, the other day, <laughs> there's this thing called circuits. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, I have heard of it. Thank you. Circuits are just um, a bunch of different exercises that you're supposed to do in a circle or whatever. You do something for a minute or so and then you move on to the next one and you keep going through it. it it's a good way to target lots of different um, muscle groups and keep some variety in your workout. So there's a circuits class at um, our gym <laughs> and um, Nathan and his family have been going there for a while. And so I decided to go. I decided I was brave enough to go. Nathan hyped it up and he's like, you know, it's it's really tiring, but it's fun. But I was aching for like two days after and I was like, oh shit, like I don't think I'm ready for this. But then I believed in myself and I thought, fuck it, I'll go, I'll do circuits. And if I have to hide in the hallway or pretend I'm going to the bathroom, I'll do that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, because I don't know. I don't know my fitness level right now, and I get scared when I'm in a position where I have to push myself harder than I'm prepared to because I don't want to, like, overexert myself and pass out in front of everybody or something. That's my big fear. Um, but, I mean, with circuits, it's good because you can go at your own pace or your own intensity. You can always adapt each station. So it's not like, it's not like people are going to call you out or anything, but... Um, I was going with Nathan and Kara and we're driving over and they were talking about the guy who usually runs the class and they're like, oh, we love him. He's great. He always plays really awesome music. Um, <laughs> and then they're talking about this other dude from the gym. Um, let's call him Derek. They're talking about Derek and they're like, dude, Derek's so annoying. Like, like, uh, Luckily, he's only been at the front desk. I haven't really seen him, like, I haven't ever seen him run circuits. So, like, it'll be the other guy. It's not going to be Derek. I mean, like, why would it be Derek? So, of course, we walk in the gym. And who's running circuits? Derek. <laughs> and they literally, I was laughing so hard because looking at the looks on their faces was so funny. Like, they were, like, properly upset, <laughs> you know? Um, 
they were literally like, should we just leave? Like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. Right. And they're like, I don't know. So they have, they have a history with Derek. Okay. And you know, I don't know the guy, but apparently he's the kind of dude around the gym who kind of, he, he's one of the like trainers or he obviously works there. So, um, he, he apparently is the kind of dude who will be like, like he always knows more than you, which is helpful in some extent in a gym kind of environment because you're there to help people make sure they're doing exercises correctly or, you know, whatever. But apparently he just goes a little too far and he can be kind of annoying. Again, no tea, no shade. I hope you're not listening. (laughs) The chances of anyone from this community listening to this podcast right now is very low. Um, But Derek... Derek is running it. And when we walk in, um, he's going through every circuit, you know, station, and there's like 24 or some amount. And he's explaining how to do every single one. And I'm looking at the faces of all the other people. And this is like, this is not an intense gym. You know, all ca- people from all ages and all fitness levels go to these classes. It's not super intense. But I'm looking at all these faces and everybody's like, Ugh. you can tell everybody's kind of on the same level, like not vibing with this. Um, but again, I'm laughing. My spirits are up just on the irony of all this. I'm like, how is it possible that you guys were just saying that there's no chance he would ever do circuits? And here he is. During my first circuit experience, they're like, I'm so sorry. We wanted you to have a good first experience. I don't know how it's going to be now. I was like, hey, I don't know. Let's do it. Let's just hope we survive. Um, so then... We do this warm up, you know, we're just running laps and like doing all kinds of like arm waving and getting ourselves ready. And um, he turns on his music. And again, the other guy who usually runs circuits, they said he plays great music. It keeps you really motivated because you can't really wear headphones or anything because it's like a group activity and it moves really fast. So you're just listening to the gym music. (laughs) And Derek turns on Sandstorm. Dude, are you kidding me? It's 2018 and Sandstorm is in your gym pump up playlist? I was laughing so hard. But also I was like, no way is this really happening right now. What a damn dude. Um, He also played uh, (laughs) that Madonna song that's like, time goes by so slowly. I hate I hate new Madonna songs. I don't like that song, and I don't like Four Minutes. You only got four minutes to save the world. Every time those songs come on in any situation, I get so angry. And I don't know why. I don't know where this came from. I fucking love some old school Madonna. Hell yeah. But, like, her more recent stuff, I'm just not a fan. So, anyway, I was judging every single one of Derek's song choices. It's just like, dude this fucking blows. It's not keeping me motivated. But the good thing is I was very distracted by um, the actual exercise of it all (laughs) and trying to just like not pass out. So I ended up um, getting through it. You know, my arms got pretty sore. My legs got pretty sore. It was a solid workout. And um, I hope that next time we go to circuits, it'll be the other dude. Uh, No offense to Derek, but I would like to see the other trainer. And um, apparently other people think that the other guy's circuits are better. So that's all I'm going to say about that. No Tino shade. No local drama. Okay. Again, nobody from this area, let alone this very specific small gym, is listening to this podcast. But you never know. You never know. Um, (laughs) So next up, I have... um, some more movie reviews. I guess I wouldn't call them movies, but they are documentaries. So I guess film reviews. I got to give a shout out to my man, Louis Theroux. Dude, I had, I have to have had, what? I have to have talked about Louis Theroux at least multiple times. He's my favorite documentarian. Uh, Nathan and I are huge fans of him. And he right now is premiering a series of documentaries called Altered States. So if you want to look those up, um, if you're in the UK, you can watch them on the BBC iPlayer, I think. And otherwise, I don't know, sometimes they're available online elsewhere. But um, I would I'd recommend any of his documentaries. But um, so the ones that we've watched recently, there was one called Love Without Limits, which was about polyamory um, and kind of, you know, just just non-traditional, non-monogamous, open relationships just exploring that sort of thing. So Louis was in Portland and um, Louis's funny because he's such like a kind of awkward figure. Like that's just part of his 
personality. And as a as a documentarian, he just kind of he stands back and he asks questions that seem very like naive, but really he's very smart and he just he likes to let people speak for themselves and he also likes to clarify things. So I think a lot of the subjects kind of get annoyed with him sometimes or think that he's dumb. So they're like, why are you asking me this? You keep asking me the same things over and over. But he's just, he's, he's great at what he does. I mean, I can't explain it. You really just have to watch one of his films. But he can also be really funny. And he kind of gets people to, like, admit what they don't want to admit in, in certain situations. So this one was pretty interesting. He ended up going to some some kind of a... It was, like, kind of a sex party, but not, like, an actual sex party. It was, uh, like, a you can be topless and feed each other food and you can wear blindfolds. <laughs> so there's this part of him where he joins in and um, he's blindfolded and he's sitting there and there's, like, four or five people around him just touching him. No genitals. Again, I'm sorry. I just said that last week and now I just said it again. Um... Nothing, nothing below the belt, we'll say. <laughs> I already said it. It's too late to take it back. Um, so they're just, like, kind of rubbing his chest and his arms and, like, I guess kissing around his face and feeding him cheese. Like, he picked his own food and he just picked a bunch of cheese and they're feeding it to him. So anyway, those are the moments that are funny. But it's also, like, he's very... Again, he's he's great at drawing out, like, the truth. And so... Some of these relationships seemed like everybody was happy and everyone involved, you know, had multiple partners or whatever they want to refer to it as. People use different terms to describe, like, who their significant others are, you know? Because it can get a little bit complicated in these open or polyamorous relationships sometimes. Um, but there was this one dude who his wife had a boyfriend... And so she split her time between, you know, her house and his house. And um, the husband just seemed so unhappy. And it was so sad to watch because, like, he's saying that he's supportive and that he's so happy to see her happy. And he'd be willing to have a girlfriend if the right person comes along. But, like, the audience just gets the kind of vibe where it's like, I don't think this guy is that into it, obviously, because he's getting kind of a, a raw end of the deal. And again, this is a very complicated, like, subject, and I, I totally cannot understand what it's like to want to be um, poly or have an open relationship. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of monogamy, but uh, it's definitely a completely different world and a very different philosophy to love and relationships and what, what people are supposed to do in terms of bringing you happiness. Because a, a lot of the people featured were saying, like, it's not my husband's job to make me happy. I can be unhappy and there are some things that he just can't do to make me happy. Sometimes if you bring another person into the equation, your husband brings you this joy and your boyfriend brings you this other different joy and then and then you've got, you know, more of a complete full heart. You know, that's kind of an example um, perspective. And it's, it's wild to hear about it, again, from as a standard, you know, um, monogamous person. You know, I'm so much into loyalty and, you know, I can't imagine... I, I, they, they wouldn't call it being disloyal, though, because polyamory and open relationships are also very much about um, honesty and communication. And you're always letting your partners know, you know, what's going on. You wouldn't go behind their backs. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, again, that one is called Al Altered States Love Without Limits. And then we also watched one called Choosing Death, which is about dying on your own terms slash um, some people call it assisted suicide, but that's not the, the most favorable name for it. Basically, for people who are chronically ill or have, have a very low um, standard of living, um, in some states there is a law that allows you to um, either get a prescription or some kind of a situation to let you die on your own terms. So, yeah, it, it is popular among people. Um, popular. That's a terrible way to describe it. I think it's an important choice to be able to have an option. There are people who say you have, you know, terminal cancer and you have less than six months to live. If you choose that you would rather, you know, take this cocktail of pills or whatever and um, 
be able to die in your own home with your loved ones around in whatever situation that you choose rather than letting yourself kind of wither away and and a lot of the participants uh, were talking about how they they didn't want to hurt their families more by having their families watch them suffer for longer and longer and get worse and worse. You know, your health is deteriorating. Um, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. And I'm definitely a big supporter of this right, you know, the, the choice. I, I, I don't think it's an easy choice for anyone to make. I think um, all of the participants in the documentary were conflicted to some extent because it's not easy to decide, okay, I'm ready to go, you know, I'm ready to say goodbye to my family. A lot of people want to have as much time as possible with their loved ones, but at a point, you know, some people reach the point where they say, like, I I need to go, you know, the pain is too much or it's only going to get worse from here and I don't want anyone to have to witness that, so this is my time. Um... And there are very, very, very humane ways to do this that are relatively peaceful ways to exit. That's the term that they use, exiting. Um, And then there are also, in places where it's not legal yet, um, there are people who are called exit guides. So to get around the law, um, obviously there are a lot of laws with, like, assisting people in their death and how, you know, you could be prosecuted as a murderer, you know? So... Exit guides ha- guides have to be very careful, but basically they are allowed to speak with you. So what they do is they tell people what their options are. They tell them how they could, you know, build their own... Mm, how do you say this? I almost said death machine. That's absolutely a terrible way to say it. Um, you know, some people... I read about this a long time ago, so it was interesting to see a documentary. But for example, one method is... Um, using helium because helium you know if you're if you were to put a bag of helium over your head you would slowly run out of oxygen and pass out but it's kind of a i guess a less painful way to um suffocate oh god but um yeah i mean it's it's dark and it's not easy to talk about but i think when you look at people who know that they are going to die they know that it's coming it's, it's pretty terrible to tell them that they don't have the choice and that they have to continue to suffer. Um, I think that it's it's good to have that choice. And of course, again, it's, it's not something that people are doing happily. It's not something that they're overjoyed to, to do. But I think it's important to have that, that decision to be yours. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, (laughs) it brought up a lot of interesting questions, and of course, um, as these policies become more popular and more states try to pass laws to allow this, um, the discussion is going to be more, more common and people are going to chime in and give their thoughts. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a great documentary. I was, of course, crying the entire time. You guys already know, I love tears. (laughs) I just let the tears flow, and it is it is pretty sad. I'm I'm a very um, empathetic person, so I could I could relate to the grief of the families. I could relate to the pain of the you know the people choosing their time to exit. Um, not saying that I'm some special emotional person. I'm just very very <laughs> I'm very easily emotional. Um, Nathan always looks over at me, and I'm cr- dude. The other day, I straight up cried at a Chick Fil A commercial. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) It was some commercial where, like, there's this family night and um, this mom would go with her kids, but they would always kind of be running late and they'd get there right at the end. And the Chick-fil-A worker noticed that and she got it extended an extra hour so that that family, I'm like almost tearing up right now, she got it extended another hour permanently so that that family could show up and make it there on time. And I'm like, ugh. That hurts my heart, even if it is just a a ploy to try to sell Chick-fil-A to people, you know? Oh, God. But, like, I mean, a good heartwarming or heart-wrenching commercial, Ah, I'm a fan. So, of course, with the holiday season, there's even more, like, heart-wrenching and, like, emotional-driven commercials. And I'm just like, damn it. There's this other commercial, this girl, like, giving her mom lipstick or something, and at first I didn't understand it. But um, her mom's, like, wearing the lipstick and singing, and I guess that that's, like, a a future moment, and then you see the moment of the daughter giving her 
mom lipstick and it says keep singing and I I fucking cried at that dude I cried (laughs) it's not even worth crying at see it's like I understand me crying at um you know people literally dying or having to choose when to die or whatever that whole situation but crying at commercials crying because of adverts (sighs) bitch I am like, I am an ad executive's favorite person. I wish that it was my job to, (laughs) it would be emotionally exhausting. But if it were my job to watch all of the commercials and let them know, like, if it's emotionally, you know, tugging on my heartstrings, I would love that. Dude, if I spent my whole day, I mean, I basically do that already. Every time I'm scrolling through Facebook, I watch a dog video. I watch a baby video. I watch any of the freaking videos that come on my fucking newsfeed. I'm always crying. If I start my day with Facebook, I will have tears all down my face. And I'm not even getting paid for that, you know? Like, that's that's some real emotional labor there. I should be, I should be getting some coin. I'm gonna look this up. Is this a job that I can have? I would love to do that. I could be in focus groups and it could just be me and a group of other sensitive people just sitting there crying over ad after ad. (laughs) Dream job, everybody. All right, I'm going to take a break and I will be back for our last section in which I will talk about Black Friday. It's almost, it's almost there. It feels weird because I'm in the UK. We do have Black Friday, but we don't have Thanksgiving out here, obviously. So anyway, BRB. And I'm back. I've put on a sweater because it's getting a little chilly. The sun is going to go down. We got to finish the pod. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is Black Friday slash the consumeristic holiday season. Is consumeristic a word? Consumerist? Materialistic? Whatever. Um... As you probably know, I'm not a big fan of malls. I'm not a huge fan of fast fashion. I'm not a big fan of overconsumption in general. So I always feel very conflicted when I um, either, yeah, go to a shopping mall or I don't know, really, like anywhere. Anywhere that I know that things aren't produced sustainably, I can't really feel joy (laughs) being there. Um, So the holiday season is a weird one for me because, uh, like I said, we were just at the mall the other day and there are all these sales going on. It's Black Friday. Black Friday starts so early. The cyber, um, it used to just be that Cyber Monday was the only sale, but now Black Friday sales start online like so early. But anyway, um, obviously I don't have anything against getting deals, but obviously, um, It's just, it's more than that. Like, I got a phone one year for Black Friday, and that was nice because I saved a couple hundred dollars, and it was just, it was a good time to upgrade my phone. But then there's, like, the needless shopping, um, which, again, I don't, I don't blame people for wanting a deal. I was looking at this, (sighs) there's this brand called L'Ecole des Femmes, L'Ecole des Femmes. I can't even pronounce my fucking French anymore. That sounded like shit. Sorry. Um... It's this really great French-inspired brand. It's very expensive, but I like to look at their sale section and cry um, because there are some jeans and there was, like, this vegan leather jacket that I wanted. And they have, like, all these really pretty, um, like, French-made almost style, (laughs) like, dresses. It's a very particular style, but um, it's very expensive. So I was like, oh, my God, Black Friday sale, bitch. Luckily, the jacket that I wanted was not available in my size because your girl would have fucking bought it. I would have spent like a hundred and something dollars buying this vegan leather jacket that I don't necessarily need, but I do want it. Anyway, I understand using Black Friday to support brands that you love, especially sustainable brands, but it does make me a little bit upset to see the frenzy of shopping. I think that's my biggest problem is like, First of all, I don't like the vibe of, like, a busy shopping mall because everyone's, like, just moving so fast and, you know, running from place to place. Um, It's funny because depending on what your attitude is toward Christmas and the holiday season, like, I like Christmas, but I don't think I love Christmas, you know? Like, there are people who love Christmas and they love gift shopping and they love getting deals and all of that. Um, So here's my philosophy. I don't know. I don't know where this began. I think I've always been rather, um, 
not not much of a gift person. I like to give gifts, but my favorite gifts to give are like handmade, homemade, you know, kind of things that I can put a lot of thought into. Um, Because it stresses me out to think, oh, what can I buy for someone? Like, what do they like? And then not know if they'll like it or if they'll use it. Or, you know, so many gifts that I've received that obviously I'm grateful for and I'm happy when people want to give me gifts. That's a really nice thing. um, And I want to reciprocate that. But like, it makes me mad how many gifts are given that end up unused because that's just wasteful. I mean, yes, you think about like, oh, it's the thought that counts. Like, I would never be like, hey, thanks for this present. I'll never use it. (laughs) Like, I would never tell someone that. But like, That's the thing about gift giving or receiving that stresses me out is like, how do I give someone a thoughtful gift that they will use that's also not too cheap, but not too expensive because I can't afford to buy all the presents for everyone that I know. I don't know. (laughs) Um, I feel like I'm kind of like a Grinch figure when it comes to gift giving. Um, I guess maybe because, like, growing up, we had, like, a standard Christmas, you know, my immediate family, but we never had, like, obnoxious gifts, you know. I knew a lot of people who you'd go on Facebook or even MySpace and people would immediately post what they got. They'd say, this year I got an iPod Touch and I got a new Xbox and I got this and that and this and that and, um... You know, my parents didn't have enough money to buy us all of those big extravagant gifts. But, you know, even if I got them, I would hope that I wouldn't be on Facebook bragging about it. Um, And again, nothing is wrong with receiving gifts that are expensive either. But I'm just saying, like, my Christmas, in my mind, was very mellow, you know? Like, we were chilling. We had some CDs. um, (laughs) We got some good little gifts, some clothes. But, like, it wasn't an extravagant thing. Um... And Christmas, to me, ultimately, is not about the presents, you know? For the last couple years, my Christmas tradition has been going to my grandma's house. Her birthday is on Christmas. So that day already is kind of, like, mostly in my mind. Like, we do have Christmas morning, but the day is dedicated to my grandma. And so when we're at my grandma's house, um, especially since, like, my sister and I have been adults, but we're still kind of broke. It's kind of just agreed upon between all of us. Um, You know, it's my grandparents, me and my sister, my uncle, um, our aunts occasionally, some other people. But it's kind of generally agreed upon that we're not going to go overboard with the gifts um, just because, you know, people don't want to spend too much money. So we'll buy a couple things. Maybe we'll get matching clothes one year or new pajamas or whatever cute stuff we want to do that year. Um, But ultimately, you know, it's not about the presents for us. It's about, you know, we wake up, we do our annual candy cane hunt, and uh, we do open presents, but then we just spend the day chilling and having a good time. And I think that's obviously what the holidays are about. (laughs) Sounds so cheesy. Um, But really, like, my favorite things of every holiday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, my birthday, my favorite part out of any of them is just spending time with the people that I love, especially because I don't get to do that very often during the year. I live away from most of the people that I love. And, um, but yeah, so I'm like, when it comes to presents, I don't know. It's like, um, I just, I don't know. Okay, first of all, yes, it's probably that I'm cheap. Um, I haven't really bought gifts for friends in, like, years, but again, I think that's kind of been mutual because we're all, like, broke college kids or broke college dropouts, if you're me. Um, So it's kind of like agreed upon, like, we're not going to buy each other presents. Or if we are, maybe we'll do some kind of a white elephant, 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 some kind of a gift exchange. So everybody just buys like one present. At most, you're spending like 20 bucks. And then we get to do a little gift opening and that's it. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I think that when I think of gifts and Christmas, I think of kids. So obviously, if you've got young kids around, like, That is a magical time for them, and I totally understand why people want to go a little bit overboard with buying their kids presents. Because, like, what's better than watching kids open a bunch of presents and get excited and, you know, have the magic of Christmas morning? But um, as an adult, like, if it were up to me, if I were having my own Christmas party, and this was the only Christmas event that I had to think about, and everyone that I loved would be there, um, I don't know to what extent I would do presents. Because obviously you do want to have some presents, 
because it's Christmas and that's like part of the festivities, I guess. Um, but it's 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 difficult because I wouldn't I wouldn't want that like massive pile of gifts um, to where everyone has to kind of be stressed out looking for gifts for everyone. I would rather do like something smaller and, you know, maybe one gift per person. But again, I don't know. Sometimes it's like there's a weird obligation to get everyone a present. And sometimes you're at a Christmas party and it's somebody you barely know. And you're like, do I have to get them a present? I have no idea what to get them, (laughs) you know, like, or uh, there's this weird, like social contract where it's like, if they're getting me a present, I need to get them a present. And then you both feel obligated to get each other presents. And it's just like, hmm, interesting. But um, I don't know. I think about, I'm looking at one of my favorite Christmas gifts. I think I got this last year from my sister's boyfriend's mom. Such a sweetheart. She knitted us all um, scarves. She knitted them by hand. And uh, I still wear that scarf. That's my favorite scarf. And like that kind of a gift is my favorite thing. So like, again, my ideal Christmas party, like... (sighs) 50 to 75% of the gifts being exchanged between everyone would be handmade or something or, or experience gifts, because I think that is another really great, um, gift idea is like, if you can do something with someone or give some, someone some experience, I don't know, whether it's even like a massage or like the go ape thing that we just did, or, you know, just something where they can spend some amount of time enjoying that gift. I think that's a nice idea always. Um, But anyway, I mean, I don't know. I think most of my distaste toward the consumeristic holiday season is, again, like kind of the fast fashion, but in the world of gift giving. Like, you know, when people just give each other kind of cheap or disposable or not thoughtful things. And that's I don't know. It just, I, I, I'd, I would much rather, um, either receive like one very small, like handmade or whatever thoughtful gift rather than like a bunch of ding, 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 like whatever gifts. I don't know if that makes sense. And again, I'm not trying to sound like ungrateful. If anyone ever wants to give me a present, that's really fucking nice. Like, thank you so much. Um, I think more so it's, it is me being broke at this point in my life where I'm like, fuck, I'm like, how many people should I be buying presents for right now? Oh, shit. Also, this year it's different because I'm in England. um, So I'm not as much thinking about, like, my family that I'd usually be shopping for. But now I'm like, oh, no, should I order stuff online and have it sent to them? Oh, God. Um, I I do need to add that to my list. Anyway, I don't know. I'm very conflicted about it, as you can tell. Um, Let me know what you guys think of the holiday season. I just think... I I, I guess I don't like seeing the... um, the mall aspect of it, like the frenzy of shopping, you know, like, I like, I like the idea of gift giving. I think it's very sweet. I think it is awesome to be able to give someone something that you think will make them happy. Um, And it makes a lot of people happy to do that. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Anyway, I just wanted to like rant about that. Because I mean, maybe I just hate malls. (laughs) You know? Oh, God. Because when you're walking past, like, at least me, when I walk past a bunch of fast fashion stores, cheap stores, they all have sales, everything's, you know, $1, $5, cheap, 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 cheap everywhere. That doesn't bring me joy or excitement like it would for some people who love to shop and they love to find deals. I I think I know too much <laughs> in that it just triggers a, like a guilty feeling in me where I'm like, that was made with slave labor basically, you know, like, I I can't feel joy about something that's been cheaply made, um, you know, abroad, and the people who are making it aren't making a livable wage. I mean, again, I'm probably thinking a bit too deeply into it. But then I'm like, am I? I feel like we should think about that. I don't think it's good to just succumb to the mindless shopping, you know, atmosphere, because that's what it is, you know? Anyway, in my ideal future Christmas or holiday season, whatever you celebrate, maybe you don't celebrate, maybe you're a Jehovah's Witness. Um, It would be handmade, thoughtful, whatever kind of gifts, even silly gifts. I love a good silly gift or a practical gift, bitch. Last year, I bought my sister a a humidifier and and she said it was the best gift that she has received this year because it is dry as hell in Phoenix, Arizona. When I was there for one night, I was like, ouch, my nose hurts. Let's get her a humidifier. That's a useful gift. 
I love giving things that like I know will be used. And I'm like, it may not be the most glamorous gift, but you're going to fucking love it. So anyway, um, or or if I'm a rich ass bitch in the future, which I hope to be simply just so that I can buy very expensive, not intentionally expensive, but like I can buy the more pricey, sustainable things like your ya bitch is going to be shopping at some very sustainable, locally made clothing stores or I don't know. Or I'm going to support like local shops and I'm going to be able to pay a little bit extra because I know that these people are making a living wage and I want to support their business. Anyway, <laughs> that's my rant. I really hope that didn't come off across, come off the wrong way. I'm losing my ability to speak. It's fine. Um, and again, no judgment to those of you who love presents. It's okay to love presents. It's okay to love things. It's okay to love giving things to other people. But um, yeah, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, the theme music is playing in my head already. It automatically plays around one hour and I'm not done yet. So I feel like the music just tried to cut me off in my Oscars speech. Okay. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank the Academy. <sighs> anyway, uh, again, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. Leave me a review if you want me to read it self-indulgently in the next episode. And I'm going to Dublin. So I hope I, uh, hope I have a real good time. I hope I eat a lot of good vegan Irish food and uh, I'll definitely be telling you guys any noteworthy stories on next week's episode. So thank you so much for sitting and chatting with me. I hope you had a good commute or whatever you're doing. If you're just sitting, maybe washing the dishes and listening to me, I want to say thank you. <laughs> All right, that's it. Okay, thanks. Bye.